In this video, we're going to have a look at carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids contain the carboxyl functional group. And when naming carboxylic acids, they contain the suffix anoic acid. It's important when naming carboxylic acids that you include the carbon within the functional group in the name. So you can see in this case we've got three carbon atoms in the chain. So this would be prop, prop anoic acid. Now over here we can see the carboxyl group written in condensed form. So you need to be able to recognise that also. And you also need to recognise to include that carbon in the name. So in this case we've got four um, carbons within the chain. So this would be butte anoic acid. Carboxylic acids can be produced or made by the oxidation of primary alcohols or aldehydes. So you should recognise that it is the carboxyl group which has been changed here. So if we go back a step, um, the parent aldehyde that carboxyl group becomes the carbonyl in the terminal position. And if we go back another step, we'll see that that carbonyl becomes the hydroxyl group um, of a primary alcohol. Carboxylic acids are weak acids, which means that they will partially ionise. It's important to remember that it's always the functional group which is changing when you are looking at the reactions of organic compounds. So with a carbo uh, carboxylic acid, that's the carboxyl group. So we can see it's this hydrogen here which is going to be allowing our carboxylic acid to behave like an acid. That is, it's going to donate that hydrogen. When that happens, we are left with a carboxylate functional group, which will form a carboxylate salt. It's important that you can recognise these reactions when they're written in expanded or semi-expanded form like this, but also when they're written using the condensed formula of the functional groups. For example, um, here we've got the condensed formula for a carboxyl group, and here we've got the condensed structural formula for a carboxylic group. Now because a carboxylic acid is an acid, it will undergo neutralisation reactions. And the basic rule to remember with most neutralisation reactions is an acid in the base is going to give you a salt and water. And in this case, the salt is going to be a carboxylate salt. So when your carboxylic acid is reacting with a hydroxide ion, we can see that it donates this hydrogen to our hydroxide ion to give us our water. And then we are left with the carboxyl group here. Oh, sorry, the carboxylate group here. It's important to take note that this is an ionic equation that's been written here. The spectator ions have been left out. So, for example, if this was actually sodium hydroxide, what you would actually get over here would be a sodium carboxylate salt. So you would draw that. As such. When the base contains a form of carbonate, you need to remember that you get carbon dioxide as a product also. In this case, we get 
one oxygen from the carbonate group and both our hydrogens need to come from the carboxyl group over here. So we're going to need two of those and that's going to give us our water. You notice once we've taken one oxygen out of our carbonate, we're left with CO2. So that's what forms our carbon dioxide. And then we have two carboxylic ions. When dealing with a hydrogen carbonate, again, we're going to get one of our hydrogens to form water from our carboxyl group. But now we've got one within our base as well, so that's where the other hydrogen comes from. And again, we take one of these oxygens. So that's going to give us our H2O. After we've taken the hydrogen and an extra oxygen away from our hydrogen carbonate ion, we're left with CO2. Um, and again, of course, we have our carboxylic salt. Now something I want to point out here that you should be taking into mind with your equations is the states of all of the reactants and products. So our bases that we use are general solutions, so they're an aqueous state. Our carboxylic acids will start off as either a solid or a liquid. Okay, so molecules of that solid or liquid. But it's important to notice that our carboxylate salts for the form will be aqueous, particularly if um, they're with sodium or potassium salts or something like that. They're soluble in water, which means we've got an aqueous solution. Obviously our water is a liquid and our carbon dioxide is going to be a gas. So a few important things um, that come out of the states of all of these things. Um, firstly, if you are reacting your carboxylic acid with a carbonate base, carbonate or hydrogen carbonate that is, you're going to get carbon dioxide gas produced. So you'll observe bubbling. So that can be um, a useful indication that you've got carboxylic acid within a reaction mixture if you react it with a carbonate base. The other thing to take note of here is the fact that our carboxylate salt that is formed is soluble in water. So by converting our carboxylic acid group or our carboxyl group into a carboxylate group, we've increased the solubility. The reason for that increase in solubility is the stronger interactions that that group now undergoes with water. So we can see that the carboxyl group can undergo significant hydrogen bonding with water, whereas a carboxyl ion can now undergo iron dipole bonds with the polar water molecules due to the negatively charged oxygen atom within the group. So because that's a full charge, an iron dipole bond is much stronger than a hydrogen bond. And that increase in strength in the interactions between um, the structure and the water molecules increases its solubility. One context where this increased solubility is relatively significant is in drugs. So for example, if we take a look at something like aspirin, it's got a um, carboxyl functional group here. Um, to increase the solubility of drugs and therefore their ability to be taken up by the body, um, they're often delivered with that carboxyl group in the form of a carboxylic salt. So for example, as such. And by converting them into the carboxylate form, they're going to be more soluble in water. And the way this is achieved is that um, the solid tablet, which these drugs may come in, 
would also contain um, say a, a hydrogen carbonate base so when they come into contact with water or chewing um, the reaction occurs between the carboxyl group and the hydrogen carbonate base converting the carboxyl group into the carboxylate salt and therefore making it water soluble.